Runk. <laughs> Lifeline is an advice show for entertainment purposes only. If you need real help or advice, please seek a therapist or a licensed professional. Hello. 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 It was Hello? very cool Hello? that you had a dream Hello? last Hello? night. It was very cool Hello? that you had a dream last night that Hello? your friends were in a house burning alive because they wanted to, and there was nothing you could do except scream and cry. Oh, that was me. Interesting, because I was about to correct you and say, actually, I had a dream where I was a part on both sides and different taking turns on reenacting genocides. So I would be both the killing party and the killed party and people would reenact them but we realized each time anew that there were real bullets in the guns like it was like a civil war re reenactment but these were like not real genocides in the past like future genocides that hadn't actually happened mm. and I, we had to like act them out and then we would realize as as we were acting them out they were really killing us oh god and then it would reset and then i would be the killer and then it would reset again and i would be the the one who get. and each time a i would Tom be surprised Cruise movie. oops each time i would be surprised a Tom Cruise movie, dude, it's called The Killing Party, called yeah, Genocide man. in the so, fu gen Future Genocide. So it's all good that we have super fucked up brains. No, dude, mine was fucked up, man. I was just like, no, uh, crying. And somebody was just watching me cry while one of my friends chose to burn alive in a fucking house. But they wanted to do it. Yeah, I know. But dude, he was still screaming and stuff anyway, dude. It was sad. We, <sighs> start, we hate to start, um, Nicholas Cage, we hate to start, <sighs> we hate to start uh, on a somber uh, down trodden uh message but you got too many drinks man so well uh how but, about this i gotta how have you been oh okay well that's cool how have i been well dick. i went worst therapist to... <laughs> dude you have too many drinks okay well i like to drink them all water perrier coca-cola not something worth just checking out dude <sighs> that's a coke uh, i mean a blind taste test <laughs> <laughs> that's a perrier head the way you laugh <laughs> Uh, all right, all right, all right. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So, speaking of blind taste tests, you just straight up look blind. Where all good. I went this weekend was a place I like to call Montreal, which I love. I love Montreal. Do you like to call it that because it's Montreal. <laughs> it's uh, I love Montreal. First well, time I ever went there was with you. Why is that? Camera not blinking, it is blinking. Okay, good. Um, First time I, you went with me, and you know what you said once when we were there? You said I will come to Montreal with you every single time you come, and you only went once. You didn't ask me. No, but I, I went. I went. I didn't. I didn't. I went. Right. I went because I uh, had some uh, movies in a film festival up there and was invited and paid for and yada yada yada. Bada bang, bada boom. Anyway, I was supposed I mean, to come back on Monday, but I had a bunch of work shit. Um, so I had to change my flight to Sunday. The the group I was with, I had to go alone. Okay, I had to fly back alone. Okay. Now you know me. Okay, you know. By the anyone. way, I've been telling Chris all fucking these last few days. I got this story for you. I can't wait to tell you, but I'm not going to tell you until we start the fucking podcast. So you don't know the story. No, and you okay. keep talking about how crazy it is. Okay, it's the craziest thing that's ever happened to me. All right, besides I'll be the judge. when I fell down an elevator shaft. What? Yeah. When okay. did that happen? Uh, in, Butthead. In, uh, uh, in high school? Was that in high school, Chris? Uh, <clears throat> yes, but you weren't the person who fell down. Okay, great. Wow. So, um, okay. well, so it wasn't you. So anyway, so uh, this. Maybe story is the number one craziest thing that's ever happening by far. Okay. Okay. So, um, since we just found out that the elevator thing happened to Chris, not this Matt. is verifiable, and I keep waiting for the fucking cops to call me. You know what I mean? Okay. okay so, um, I'm flying alone, and you know me. How like n nervous am I to fly? Zero. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Zero percent nervous to yeah. fly. I fly a lot. I never get nervous. I'm just yeah. like whatever. We take off. Right. I fucking fall asleep before, and I don't even notice yeah. we took off. For whatever reason, I get I get there to the flight fucking early because they're like, get there early, get there early, get there early because custom takes so yeah, long. Yeah. Custom takes me 12 minutes. It, it never takes long, dude. And there's I like wait, one every 20 times. But the fest long. people were like warning me, warning me, okay. warning me, right? right, right, right. But, so I'm like, okay, I guess I got to fuck. Anyway, I get there and like, I'm, I got either three hours early. Wow. And, was, and I'm just <laughs> oh waiting, waiting, fucking waiting, 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 waiting. So dad. And finally we get on the plane. Then we're waiting on the plane. Yeah. And the time's going, going, going. I got a buddy picking me up on the other end. I'm like, I don't know. I'm just getting like antsy. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just realizing the limited space around me. I'm in an oh, exit boy. row, but it's not enough space. Okay. 
and uh, I'm just like, I'm like my knees tapping and I'm noticing myself getting more and more anxious. Wow. And I'm just like, <laughs> all right, at least if we just take off, it'll yeah. be- it, uh, You'll be we'll, on your way. Exactly. So five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes pass. Finally, we take off like 30, 40 minutes after we were supposed to. Mm -hmm. We're in the air and I'm good. Yeah. I fall asleep. Mm -hmm. I wake up mm -hmm. and I'm like- Oh fuck yeah! I bet we're almost we're almost back yeah. in LA. I look at the flight map thing, okay, and it's and it's three hours and eleven minutes left. Okay, so we're not even close. Well, but you fell asleep for fucking four hours. Two hours. Okay, so two, two hours. and a half okay. hours. Right? All right, cool. so a little a little less than halfway. Okay, so how okay. far we are. Okay, so I <clears throat> he's laughing. Already. I'm looking at three eleven. Okay, and. We've talked a little about a little bit about anxiety attacks that we've had. Yeah. And the first one I ever had, I overheard this couple talking about Jerry O'Connell. And then I started thinking about Jerry O'Connell and how weird it is that he's so famous. And then my <laughs> mind my mind just spun out. And then 90 seconds later, I'm like, I can't see my heart's beating For out of my mouth. Yeah. Joe's and, apartment was a good movie. And, anyway. <laughs> you're gonna give me one. And uh <laughs> I fucking that's so that's the context. That's my first anxiety attack. I've had like two or three total. Okay. But they're always in restaurants or weirdly lowly lit places. Like one time I had one in the stadium at night. Okay. It's the, the way the light affects me and sometimes the way my mind okay. spins out unspools okay. in an unforeseen way, right? Okay. okay. So 311. But you don't I'm, pass out. No, I don't okay. pass okay. out. Okay. So it's 311 okay. and I'm thinking about, uh, th it's I got three hours and 11 minutes. That sucks. I'm starting to realize this, this tight space again. Everybody's asleep. It's like a night flight. Oh. And then I think about, oh yeah, there's that band 311. And then I think about, oh, I remember when that band 311 was popular, everybody said it was a white supremacist band because 311, three okay, Ks, right, yeah. KKK. Right, right. And then I'm thinking about the KKK and then I'm just like, whoops, you know, my right, brain sure. is now falling out of my skull and I'm just like fucking, ah, and I get like a million fucking thoughts flying through my head, all uncontained and unthought through. Okay. And then I'm like, well, at least a lot of time just passed. And I look at the flight map and there's three hours and 11 minutes left. Okay. okay. So like I'm losing my perception of fucking time. Really? Yeah. And I'm just like, ah, but inside, right? right? right. I'm not freaking out on the outside. I'm freaking okay. out on the inside because I'm a good person. I don't want to scare these people on the plane. Yeah. So I, I'm actually like, uh-oh, this is going to be an anxiety oh, attack. Oh, fuck. And usually I have like, you know, whatever, fucking Xanax, something around. Yeah. Me. Somebody with something, uh -huh. even though I don't usually have those sure. things. So I'm like, somebody on the plane has to have one. Maybe even if I ask the flight attendant. Yeah, yeah. So I, so I go to the back and I tell this flight attendant, look, okay, uh, that, yeah. uh, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm not going to cause a scene. I don't want to scare you or anybody else. But like, I'm on the, I know myself. I've had a couple of these before in my life. I'm on the precipice of having an anxiety attack. Oh, no. And, and uh, uh, I don't know what to do. I don't have any medication with me. Yeah, okay? okay. So she's really, really nice. Okay. And she says, okay, well, let me see what I can do. And it seems like she's going to fucking figure something out, right? Yeah. So she goes to the front, to the f head of the flight crew. And, okay. and her and, and one of the head of the flight crew comes back, two women now. Okay. okay. They both come back. And she's talking to me about what she can do. Is there anything? Yeah. And she's like, well, you know, if, maybe if you just talk to me. And I'm like, ha ha, thanks. Right, but like, right, right, I right. know what right, I fucking right, need, right, right? You know? Right, right, right. So, sh so she's like, okay, okay. But you're, well, not, you're not telling her what you might need. I am. I'm like, I, it would really help me if the, somebody had some Got kind it. of Valium or Xanax or, or anything like that. You know right? they can't do that though, right? Okay. So... uh so she's like, okay, okay. And she's coming up with suggestions Super that like, nice, right. suck, but she's being so nice. Yeah. She's clearly never had an anxiety right. attack. She's like, know? what if we do a play? Right. And yeah. I'm just, she's like, you can pace around here in the galley. And I'm like, I don't right, give right, a right, fuck, right, 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 right. but thanks. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. But I'm like being nice, but like short, you know, I'm just like, <laughs> thanks. But you know, I actually yeah, yeah. know what this is, you know? Right. Right. And um, right. I know you in yeah, these situations. Right. And yeah. so I'm like, okay. She's like, well, what we could do, if you think it's worth it, we could call see if there's a doctor on the plane. See if he can talk to you, right? He okay. or she can talk to you, okay. right? And I'm like, normally, you know me, I would never do that, right? Yeah, yeah, But I'm yeah. like, I'm like, my heart's like about to wow. pop out of my chest, right? So I'm so like- So you're oh. really going through it. Yeah, dude. And yeah. so I'm like, I'm so I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And, sh and they're like, okay, great. And wow. they're being so nice, okay? Wow. So they call for a fucking doctor. This okay. guy comes to the back of the plane <laughs> and he's like, what's going on, you know? And everybody's got a mask on except me. And they're like, it's okay, you don't need a mask on. I think it might've contributed, but I wasn't being like a fucking shitty MAGA guy like I don't wear this shit oh, I was just like I think this might, might have contributed to what my anxiety because I'm feeling like contained oh, you know okay, what I mean okay I don't know so you just, you're saying so you took it off they let me take it got off got it okay. right because yeah, Air Canada flying from Canada yeah. legally they have to got they have it. to wear the okay, whole flight got it which sucks and um 
So the doctor is all just as fucking cool, okay. just as great. It's and they're Canadian, like, so and nice. he's like, so it turns out he's a neurosurgeon at Cedars. Whoa. Right? Okay. So he's like, my son has this exact same Whoa. thing. Happens all the time. You guys have a first aid kit, right? They're like, yes. And he's like, you guys have Valium and Xanax and Ativan in there, right? And, and she's like, yes. And I'm like, yes, right? Why didn't you say that, dude? Well, because she needs a doctor clearance. Anyway. Right, exactly. Right. So- He's like, well, get it out. And he even now he's like, just give it to him. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. He's got to sign all these papers. He's being so fucking great. He's right, like, right. My absolute hero. Yeah, cool, cool. Okay. Cool. So he fucking, he hooks me up and he's like, he'll need two, but give him one. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, if he's not feeling a lot better in mm -hmm. 20 minutes, give him the next one. Right. Okay. I take one, feel a little bit better. Okay, good. Okay? Yeah. Good. Doing his job. 20 minutes later, I'm like, I'm still like, yeah. my heart's still racing. Uh -huh. It would be better. I've taken this drug many times. Yes, right. I've been prescribed it. And uh, by doctors Adam who know, yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and he's like, okay, well, she comes by and she's like, would you, the head of the flight team, would you like that other one? Yeah. Uh, I can see you seem a little bit still maybe nervous. Yeah. And I was like, that would be amazing. Thank you so much. She brings me another one. Okay. Uh -huh. Now I'm like, okay, well, the edge is going to go. Now here's where the story turns. Oh my God. The woman in the row in front of me turns around and says, hi, so nice. Hi, I heard you were having an anxiety attack. I get them all the time. Would you like some of my medicine? Oh. She doesn't know at all that I've gotten medicine right, from flight people right, already, right, okay? Right, right, right. Which is already a lot. It's not like I'm going to go fucking passing out or anything. Right, right. But it's a big dose. Two milligrams of Ativan is a lot. That's, yeah, okay. Um, so, and, but me being me uh, and not you, yeah. I immediately say yes before she can even stop asking, finish asking the question. Wow. She gives me a pill that I've never seen before. And but I you might, already had the second one. I know. Right before this, right before it, she. So you should have waited for it to. Set oh it. yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. right. So I should have waited. I shouldn't even have taken it. Right. Oh god. So man. she hands me the pill, <clears throat> and in one motion, her hand comes out. My yeah. hand goes out, gets it, and just fucking okay. takes the pill. Right. Jesus. You didn't ask her what it was. Uh, no, dude. I just it okay. was just so All right. stupid. All right. right. Okay. 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 So uh, I take it, mom and dad. Sorry, I know you're listening. To this you're so mm. fucking freaking out right now. That's crazy. I dude. won't do it again. I promise. Uh, next thing I know, dude. I'm coming to, standing above different people on the plane, in the middle of conversations, and all of them are looking at me like this. And only I can see their only their eyes. They're all like this. And they're they're scared. We're really you? confused. I'm in the aisle, standing over them. And every time I come to, I realize I'm scaring this person. I don't know how I got here. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. They're, where are they? They're just They're in their standing. seat being good people, regular, okay. good, calm, okay. collected, good citizens. Okay. Okay. And I'm- These are passengers. Passengers, dude. Okay. And I'm standing over them. Okay. Looking down at them, mm -hmm. probably really scary without a mask on. Right. Saying things that I don't even know what they are because- uh I don't know what I'm doing because I'm not too. there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I wake up when I'm realizing mm. I'm upsetting someone only. What? This happens at least four times. One time, dude. Uh, two of them I, do, I remember distinctly. Okay. One time, <laughs> a guy is pushing me off of him. And I come to because he's physically pushing me. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm being pushed by a guy who I don't know who it is and I don't know what I'm talking to him about. And But then when I come to, I'm just me again. So I'm like, dude, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. I don't even know what I said to you. I don't know what I said to you. Whatever I fucking said what? to you, I don't know what it was and I'm sorry, okay? The next one that I remember, I'm standing above this poor middle-aged woman. I'm sure a very nice, sweet person. She looks fucking terrified. And all I know is that I come to wake up, let's say, saying, remember that? You, you don't remember that? Okay. You don't remember that? And she's just like, like okay. so scared. You know what I mean? Okay. And I feel so bad because I'm the one scaring yeah, this person. Yeah, yeah. And I don't even know how I did it. Right. Right. Okay. So then finally I'm oh back my in my God. fucking seat. And the guy next to me actually, I mean, everyone on this plane was so nice. The guy next to me was so nice. I guess I gave him uh, my my email address at some point, right? Oh my god! Okay, 
So he emails me just to see how I'm doing. When? Like the next day. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So and you get off the plane, everything's okay? Uh, yeah, dude, I find a guy picking me up. The next day he was like, you were fucked up. What the fuck? You know, what happened to okay. you last night? And I was like, I told you. He's like, I know, but dude, what the fuck? Well, I dropped you off at a 7-Eleven. Well, I, I, I picked you up, then took you to 7-Eleven. You came out, everyone in the 7-Eleven was like dying laughing. What? At you. I was like, I don't remember that even a little bit, right? So uh, the guy who I was sitting next to, him and his wife, they were coming back from Italy. He's like- he emails me just to see how I am. Okay. Right. And I'm yeah. like, oh, dude, I'm fucking great. Like, I feel great. Thanks for checking in. How you doing? Like, I remember you're a really nice guy. Yeah. But I know what's up. Yeah. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I know why he's checking you know out me. your worst. Yeah. yeah. And so I fucking, I'm like, hey, do you, you know what I was doing, right? And he was like, yeah, like, yeah. kind of everybody knew what we right. were doing. Oh, you know? my God. And like, uh, I was like, did I like do anything really bad? Yeah. 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 And yeah, he yeah. was like, actually, no. It was just like you were being like really weird. And I was like, what was I doing? And he's like, well, I don't know, because I didn't hear yeah, all yeah, of it, and no one did. But right. you, at the one point, the woman that I was like, do you remember that? Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Yeah. Uh, he was like, you were asking if she remembered the uh, the band Pearl Jam, <laughs> and if she remembered the song Daughter, and when she wasn't responding, you started singing it to her. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, dude. Thank mm. God I wasn't there. Mm. Thank God no one I know was there. Yeah. Mm. Don't no, call I would... me <laughs> to her. Not fair town. Dude, on a plane to a stranger with no mask on, looking up at me fucking terrified. So what? No would... picture can well remind me. Just like scaring everybody, dude. What did the flight attendants do? I Nothing, wonder? dude. They let me run free because oh, I wasn't God. like really doing anything i guess i mean that's kind of harassment it in a is way, harassment yeah. dude and i fucking feel bad i feel bad i mean i feel terrible dude okay okay so hold on so all right so holy shit dude and you don't but that's crazy that that you can be standing up doing stuff dude. and you don't even you're not even aware and i'll tell you the craziest part is that <laughs> when i would snap into it yeah I was just me again, and I remember all of that. Right. So, so the fourth time it happened, were you like, "Fuck, another one of yes, these things dude. again"? Because you knew it was happening. Yes, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. It was like, "What the fuck?" Like, sit in my chair, motherfucker. Oh wow, dude. Like I'm two people. Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Two people, dude. Doctor Jekyll and Mister Matt. And the moral of the story is, I'm two people. Oh man. Yeah. That is crazy, dude. Do you remember Pearl Jam? I'm like the Chris Farley show, you know? Like yeah. I'm interviewing Eddie Vedder <laughs> on the Chris Farley show. <laughs> Boom, the lady and then you walk up hey do you remember pearl jam uh do you remember daughter i, I don't know don't call me daughter what the f oh sorry ma'am <laughs> well that, that was probably the scariest part to them where i just yeah. turn into somebody yeah, else yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, whoa dude i wonder what that pill was dude it was bigger than an adivan and blue this is the Matrix. You were in the Matrix, dude. Maybe, The blue dude. pill. Maybe I wow. was. Thank God they didn't give you the red pill. Then you really would have been yeah, MAGA. Yeah, dude. Then I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wow, be, I wouldn't even dude. fucking be here. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, that. what's your advice is don't take medication that isn't... That, yeah, dude, that, that was it. Oh, wow. So she gave you Xanax? Don't you take, take Xanax and Ativan together? I guess don't take a lot of Ativan and a lot of Xanax together. Who knew? Wow. What, what is the dosage on that? So, what's the size of the pill? Like, what's the milligrams on that one? Anyway, it was a lot. Well, the advice if someone called in for that would be don't mix medications Do not, if the doctor doesn't tell you to. Yeah, he didn't prescribe that. Oh, uh, why did you take it? Wait, what's the 605? What's, what's that one? That's at Al, Al, Alprazolam, is that say? Yeah, Al... Weird Al... Alprazolam is Xanax, yeah. Weird Alprazolam. Alprazolam is Xanax, yeah. Weird Alprazolam. That, 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 oh, it was Weird Alprazolam weird when Al I took that. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Real that was me, dude. Weird Alprazolam. That, that's the pill. That's it. I gave a fucking big ass Xanax after the two big out event. Oh, you took Alprazolam? I mean, I, I, I've taken Alprazolam, but I wonder what the dosage was. She probably gave you a fucking Zanny bar, dude. Yeah, it was, I, I definitely took the whole thing. I didn't break anything. Just, yeah. Foo. It was probably too... too uh, Two mil two two whatever the yeah phones. two milligrams yeah because yeah, I do like a point two five and I go yeah. to Sandy Island if I go to if I take a point if I take half of a milligram of Xanax I'm like yeah fucking chill if you take a point one. five you go to Sandy Island for a post up for a few fucking days you know what I yeah mean? and if you take a but whole if milligram you fucking take two you just you go to Zanny Planet you cross Zanet. country yeah right cross country Xanax 
Boy. Yep. All right, cool. All right, well, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, that's sorry. Am- I just had to tell a That's an story. amazing story. It's, it's the craziest thing that's ever happened to me. Really? Because I, I don't remember things I was doing that were definitely scaring people. Mm-hmm. And I don't yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? Jesus Christ. Thank God you're not famous. All right. Oh, let's, my God. Uh, Thank God it was a dark flight and everybody was asleep. Oh, I'd be on fucking yes. Reddit by now for sure. Oh, yeah. You right? Would. Yeah. Right. People would be like, that's Matt D'Elia. Yeah, from yeah. Wow. yeah. Okay, We'd get cool. bigger well, ratings, which would have been good, actually. That's Well, that is... Uh, yeah, that's the craziest thing that's yeah, ever happened to you. Definitely. All right. Uh, well, before we get into it, we were going to do this, but uh, I got um, dates coming up. I will be in Grand Prairie, Texas, Dallas, uh, August 26th, Wichita, Kansas, August 27th, Atlanta, Georgia, September 9th, and Washington, D.C., September 10th, Stockton, and Oakland. I have a bunch of dates. Go to chrislea.com, Cheyenne, Wyoming, Denver, Colorado, Boston, Massachusetts, Albany. I have a bunch of dates. Go check it out, uh, chrislea.com. Get, get your tickets. It's, uh, you know, it, they're selling. So, uh, thanks. Uh, all right, let's do it. Yeah. <clears throat> let's see who it is. It's the, that's the, 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 the it dead guy. The his, dead guy. He survived. He's a paraplegic, man. <laughs> I haven't shaved, so that's probably uh, the first thing you're going to say. And this first thing most girls say is like, you like good hygiene. Um, uh, I mean, okay. I think. Died. To add to one of the problems of. I mean, this guy Why? is. Oh, wait, hold on, stop it. He's always this guy dying. Stopped in the middle. He started in the middle of of the video. Mm-hmm. Play it again in from the beginning. Anyway. So low. If that was any lower, his eyes would be covered. It's the paraplegic man. The guy from Fat Albert. I haven't shaved, so that's probably uh, the first thing you're gonna say, and the first thing most girls say is like, "You like good hygiene." Uh, I mean, um, died. I think. Died. This guy dies. To this add to dies. One you know what happens? Pause it. He goes back into. He goes back in time, <laughs> and and he experiences a whole year, and then comes back. It like or you know what I mean? Like goes yeah. to the future, experiences a whole year, yeah, and then fixes the world, and then comes back. That's what happens. Yes. <laughs> Like we would have all died, with an asteroid would have hit us and killed us. <laughs> but he saved our lives right there. Go back, go back and see how he saved our lives. What right here? Why watch when he saved planet Earth? You like good hygiene. Um, save the planet. <laughs> saved humanity to right add there. To one of the problems of why I had to ask for advice is because I'm short and you couldn't see that. So oh. you probably have to answer for that. Um so I'm that thinking maybe humanity. <laughs> should we just go for taller women or, I mean, he looks shorter than your wife or is Matt, are you, are you taller than yours? What? I don't know. I, if I, that's the issue. But I look shorter than my wife? Yeah, you look shorter than Kristen. He says. Hopefully it's just not my hygiene. I know that for a fact, but I don't know. What, should I go to bars? What? I don't like bars. I don't really like drinking. Save humanity. Let me know. Saved humanity three <laughs> times, we would have been extinct. All right, all right. Uh, so, so it turns out that he's short. Okay, okay. That's, that's it. Well, first of all, how short? Second of all, I don't look shorter than Kristen. I don't dude. know, dude. This guy's got a, a couple things going on. But, uh, dude, you're fucking handsome, and you're so confident. You fall yeah. asleep in the middle of yeah. questions, he's dude. Cool. You're like Matt. You fall asleep and wake up, and then you're standing above somebody <laughs> singing Pearl Jam, dude. Um. <laughs> You and him are basically Marvel Avengers. You know right, that, right? Yeah, the, the, two, you? the two the ones two that didn't ones, make yeah. it. Yeah. Well, he's saving the world and you're just kind of singing, pro- mm-hmm. singing karaoke to people on planes. Yep. Um, yeah. Do, do I go to bars is what he's saying? Dude, I always think that meeting... If you're gonna try to meet a significant other, going to bars is the worst thing. Yeah. Like, no. you, 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 the people who are at bars are not looking to... I mean... Pretty much, they might be. But no, no, no. But but and not, but you're at a bar, dude. You go there to get drunk. You know what I mean? I mean, I yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you're looking for the people who are trying to do something to something reckless. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I think I think Gen- some people are speaking are generally trying to fuck. If he's just trying to fuck, I guess go to a bar. Well, but but that, I think he's trying to find a girlfriend, right? That's what guys go to bars for. Women don't go to bars to fuck. Ah, uh, they don't. Maybe I mean, not as generally. Much. Speaking maybe generally, not as yeah. much. But yeah, no, they go to hang out with the girls. Well, have, a, have a night out and then they come home and do a Ouija board or some shit. I'm just trying to say he seems like he's looking for a relationship and mm-hmm. don't go to a fucking bar for that. Just like be a guy in the world who is as confident as you are. You're fucking so confident. You're falling asleep in the middle of questions. Just even though you're short and obviously it doesn't matter. You're short. You fucking have confidence. That's all that matters, dude. And I don't mean like boastful fucking assholery. Just like being a person on earth who's comfortable with who you are. That's all. And you clearly are. You're falling asleep in the middle of between words all he's the saying, time. saying it so much. 
You yeah, know? he he is, but also be, maybe be more engaged. Sit up, sit when up. you're talking to people. Maybe you know, talk a little faster. Don't um, maybe don't fall asleep in the middle yeah, of sentences. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this guy, like, this is this guy. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm just thinking. You know, nice meeting you at this bar. You know, maybe we just hang out. <laughs> maybe we hang out. Sorry, I was. Tr so what had happened was, in forty years. <laughs> She's just uh, walking away already. <laughs> in 40 years, humanity is at a, a standstill. <laughs> I, had, I had to go fix uh, basically the, all the sperm count. Scientifically, I had to go fix the sperm count in men because it was dying. And it was at the crux of the situation where we was all going to be extinct. Anyway, what I'm do you want to drink? I'm going to go join my friends. What's that? I'm going to go join my <laughs> friends. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I All mean, right. yeah, the fucking guy's just, he's sitting right, it's right in front of him, dude. You're a yeah. confident guy. Be be that and yeah. talk to women and don't be a creep. It's so simple. Yeah. Just those those things. All right. You're cool. good. All right. And yeah, cool. if he's asking about hygiene, uh, be clean too. I yeah, guess. be clean. But no, but, but uh, a little bit of beard is it's good though. Yeah, the the girls beard, say that because they don't know what else to this say. This isn't like bad hygiene. No. I know. People are always like, oh, Chris Lee, you look like you don't shower, bro. I shower. Oh yeah? How about this? I shower more than you, dude. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I do. I shower at least once a day, at least. At least I never go a day without showering. Really? Ever, ever, ever. I do. What I went one day without showering in the past however many years, what? and it was when I got my nose surgery. Jesus. Hey, dude. Oh, you all right? You're fucking having a stroke over there. <laughs> all right, dude. Next one. What's up, fellas? Got a I question I could use your help baseball. on. I'm 28. Mm -hmm. The last six years since I graduated college, I've been saving up for a down payment on a house. Nice. I'm finally oh, yeah. able to do so. And what should be an extremely exciting time for me is kind of being clouded by a girlfriend who I've been living with the last two years. Pretty much said that she's not going to move into a house or even be with me if I buy a house without her on the mortgage. Personally, oh. I don't believe I should be on a mortgage with someone I'm not married to. I'm just wow. not ready for that at this yeah. time. And she's also looking at my bank account saying, if I buy a house, I won't have enough money for a ring, which the Brinks headquarters is in my backyard. Right. Just so you know. Okay, good. Question, do I proceed with buying the house? And if so, how do I break it to her that it doesn't matter, I'm going through with this shit? That's so sexy the way you just said that. That guy's a sexy guy. And that's what she wants you to say. Buy the house, bro. This is crazy. That doesn't sound like a fair deal. I don't know why. It's Am I what, missing something? What yeah. Yeah, no, she's being not. If what he's saying is true, right, which yeah. I'll assume that, right. don't buy a house. You won't have enough to get a ring. And oh, 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 he said a ring? That's what he said, oh, right? Oh, dude. Wow. Okay. And then yeah, he no. said, and then he said, I don't want to, you shouldn't buy a house unless I'm on a mortgage. Dude, those are two. Oh, those flags are burgundy, dude. Like, you got you to gotta make sure to just, this is like, these are two red flags. These That's are, not good, dude. She says she doesn't want to move in the house with unless she's on if she's not on the mortgage. Say great, thank you, and just buy the house and move in. Yeah, I'm gonna get a house. I'm gonna yeah. move in. You're welcome to come with me. Yeah, you're but, welcome to come yeah, with me. And, right, and, yeah, but but this is not happening. We get married. I could put you on the fucking shit. I could put you on the deed or whatever it is. Right. But like like let's let's work towards this together. I'm with you. We're not on different teams. We're on the same team. We want the same goal. But right now you're fucking you're jumping when we should be hopping. Right. Yeah, this is a red flag, dude. These flags be burgundy as shit, man. Wow. It's that time of the month for these flags, dude. Why is uh These flags are fucking need a tampon right wow. right up soaking next to them, dude. Wow. Are I you mean, kidding me, man? Just didn't let the metaphor sit there. I had to explain it in bloody detail. You know like I'm I mean? saying the flag would be inside of <laughs> dude, these flags are inside between you know the, of the women and it's that time right. of the month, dude. Okay. Okay. So I don't think that's a very good sounding relationship though too to robot to further to further my advice i don't think that's a very good sounding relationship <laughs> i don't think that's a very good sounding relationship i mean right it sounds bad yeah and i could tell by the kind of guy you are and the face you have the kind of relationships that you get into and i know what's going on bro okay well, why don't you tell him no because honestly that's for me and him to be on that wavelength and understand it you know what's going on bro you know what to do okay you're being a little bit of a fucking guy that's like what do i do but you know what to do and that's why she liked you in the first place and that's what works for the relationship or get to step in and that's that dude mm. okay all right there we have it next one okay so much headroom. Hey guys, oh, huge Duck fans. Dynasty. Chris, I watched you play. Ray hey, pause Redemption. It. Now, 
I know we just said guys with beards don't necessarily have bad hygiene. You're this gonna, is not an example of that. We don't know that though. He, maybe got, he showers every day. Eh, eh, eh. Let's just look at the surroundings. We look <laughs> at the, everything. You're judging. We are him, judging. Him, judging that's him. what we do best. Go I ahead. I don't judge. You judge. All right, we'll go. Here we go. Too much. Also, Matt, you're hilarious. And Thank I'm you. I'm a huge fan. Well, hey. I mean, I'm here, but. Guys, guess what? What's up? My baby gets to come home soon. Three months in the hospital. Oh, no. My wife oh. is still up there. Hour and a half away, driving back and forth. Hell yeah. And though. he finally gets to come home. Oh. So pumped. That's so awesome. Yes, dude. As wow. Would say. Um, but I want to surprise my mom and dad. Uh-huh. He's named after my dad. Okay. Clinton. So we call him little Clint. Cute. What's the best way to surprise my mom and dad? Because I, they don't know he's coming home soon. Yeah. They know he's coming home someday. Right. But what's the best way to surprise him? You guys, I love y'all. Super anxious. I filmed this 40 th- times. Aw. Look, uh, thank you. We love you, dude. Guy couldn't be sweeter, man. Congratulations I take on back that kid. hygiene shit. He seems yeah, clean as shit. Up. You did bad. I, did. I fucked up, dude. We judge uh, and we live and we learn, right? <laughs> we live and we learn. And maybe he's not part of Duck Dynasty, but if that guy hasn't shot a duck, I yeah. would be fucking absolutely shot. Right. He's probably, I, I don't judge, but he's shot a duck. He shot a duck. And so, um, look, um, I, I, I think that <clears throat> this is one of those things that you is so beautiful and so amazing that you don't necessarily want to do a thing and have it overshadow how beautiful the moment is. Mm. I think the surprise is just the fact that it's happening. Surprising them is fine, but have them show up and be like, guys, I have a surprise for you. The baby's here. Like, I don't think that there needs to be some sort of what's the best way to surprise them because the surprise is a surprise within itself. And it's already the most beautiful thing in the world. I agree about the baby. The name could be a cool surprise. You could when no, no. when oh, you he surprise him, know the name, right? Oh, the oh, they but don't when know you the surprise name. him with the kid, oh. that's that's good. But then oh. take the baby's shirt off and have it say Clinton and a tattoo on his no, chest. No, that's too. You shouldn't tattoo anyone. Uh, tattoo the baby that was just born with Clinton on his no, like um, across the chest. Oh man, that's like emotional. Actually, not that tattoo thing, but like just have, just be like Clinton. Meet Clinton Jr. That would be really sweet. That would be really, really sweet. You know what Clint, I'm talking about? Clinton's a cool name, actually. Clinton. Like meet Clinton First Jr. name. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I agree with you, actually. You don't want to, like, get caught up. Plus, you want to enjoy it. You don't want to get caught up in, like, the surprise has to be great. Like, the surprise mm. is the the thing it's is already the great. thing already. It's yeah, already the best exactly, thing. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, don't overshadow something it with Something small thing. and cute if you really want to do something, but don't make it a whole thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, Chris. Hey, Matt. I'm a huge fan of the show. Awesome. Um, just a look huge fan in general. Yeah. I will be in Jacksonville in December, so I look forward to seeing Chris yeah. then. Uh, but my question today is about my boyfriend and golf. So genuinely, greatest boyfriend in the world. Um, I know everyone says that, but he is huh. incredible. I don't really have any complaints other than he's recently been playing golf like more and more over the past year mm-hmm. or so to the point where it's like three, four times a week. And sometimes he'll go at like Whoa. 4 p.m. and doesn't get home till like 9 p.m., which kind of interferes with our chill time. Oh, he'll mean. like leave town on the weekend to go golf in other places. I just feel like he's starting <laughs> to put it before me in certain ways. Uh-oh. I'm happy he's passionate about it, but I just kind of wanted to get your opinion if you feel like i should say something before it gets to the point where it starts to interfere with our relationship just want your general take on guys who are super obsessed with golf um so yeah just want your opinion uh, and thanks for letting me come on the show his cheat <laughs> is that what we call it golf I mean, all guys thought just the same. Any guy listening to that was like, oh, shit. Dude, sometimes he leaves town for the weekend uh, and goes to Cabo and fucking sometimes just- Sometimes the golf courses smell like perfume and he comes back yeah. smelling like a lot of perfume, yeah. golf perfume. Uh, I think- O'Day Golf. He said it was O'Day Golf. All you should do is say- No, he's not cheap. We're joking. But. Yeah. All you should do is say, hey, babe, I love to see you golf every time you go- send me a picture of you on the golf course because you think that, that then you can erase cheating the cheating question. oh i don't think he's cheating yeah i mean if he's cheating he's a fucking idiot from say, <laughs> saying true, he's yeah. always golfing right yeah true. i mean it's so easy to fucking find he just gets dressed up and fucking clackety clack 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 out the house and then just i think but if the wrong <laughs> clackety 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 with the fucking you know what i mean <laughs> oh, oh 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 about to finish four <laughs> <laughs> i mean i, I 
if the question is should you say something definitely that's too that is so much fucking golfing oh, that wow. is an obscene amount of golfing that's the guy's the guy can't stop golfing cannot dude. stop can't going stop to the golf golfing. course three or four times a week goes away on the weekends to go golfing yeah 4 p.m to 9 p.m that is too much to the do nighttime anything. thing is weird oh that's, it is it does stay light it does stay light till later especially if you're in the south but it's uh, too much to do anything though it it's is too much time weird. doing anything besides work you know yeah, what, what I mean? does he do? Is he hey, is he a golfer? What the fuck? What is she like? By the way, my boyfriend is fucking Tiger Woods. Phil Mickelson. By, by the way, my boyfriend is that fucking guy with the weird haircut who, who's super fat and fucking huge MAGA guy. Oh, John Daly. Name. Nicholas. Nickel. Nickel. John Daly. Oh no, John Daly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah uh, I mean, dude, just be like, why do you fucking golf so much? Hey, how about that, man? Take it back to the fucking old school, dude. You want you want to go back to the '90s with this dude and be like, hey, by the way, why the fuck do you golf so much? Yeah. What do you running from yeah, dude yeah, 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 yeah. Well, what are you running from that maybe is a little too confrontational get to work base it but when you do bring it up don't be like don't do what he's saying at all hmm. don't be like why do you like yeah. to golf be like i'm kind of missing you and i think maybe we could cut back a little bit so we kind of split it a bit more because i think you're home less and less and i i would like to have time with yeah. us quality time in our relationship that isn't necessarily like mm -hmm. rushed because you gotta fucking go out to play Dude, golf waking up at fucking 1 a.m uh, yeah. hey i gotta go golf yeah going to golf babe it's nighttime can't stop golfing dude uh it, it, it's so funny to think like what if he is cheating and he's just is so disrespectful that he won't think of even another lie like he's right, just like yeah. golf yeah where were you golf Show, showing up in like not golf clothes i was golfing <laughs> Uh, so wants to get caught. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's just too much golf. That's too much anything, honestly. Yeah. If he was hanging out with you that much, that'd be annoying. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah. it's, it's too much of anything. He's maybe he's an addict. He's got that kind of personality. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it maybe it'll like burn it. out soon. But mm -hmm. bring it up. At least bring it up. But but honestly, when you do, don't make it sound like a judgment about on him about how he likes to golf. Make it about you mm. and how you're either missing him or thinking maybe you should spend more time together. I don't know. I think you should be judgmental. You should be like. Golf, what cooking? You should be like golf, huh? A lot lately. And then he says, "Yeah, what?" And she'd be like, mm, "I just, I don't know. I wouldn't do that if it were me." Well, she's not gonna get what she wants if she does that. Uh, be passive aggressive. All right, next. <laughs> Holding her head on. Hey guys, love your show, love your energy. You Holding her head laugh. on. Laugh. Oh. Um, here's my question for you. So I have a person in my life who, anytime I share a story with them about something that happened to me that week, or it doesn't matter in the past their response to my story is to share with me yeah. a very detailed one-up story oh like dude way better than my story oh. and i didn't notice it at first but once i started to notice that she was doing this all the time um i would just kind of like busy myself her boyfriend with just left around her. me to try to give her some social clues like hey shut up mm -hmm. i don't care it's not that i don't ever want to hear a story from her it's just yeah. that she does this every single That's, time yeah. well i started noticing story. that she does this to other people ah. and their responses are very similar to mine where you can just tell that they right. immediately become disinterested it's terrible quality and kind of are thinking the same thing like hey shut up mm. so my question to you is i'm not sure whether this habit of theirs is born out of like some narcissism or the opposite end of the spectrum, just insecurity. Should I say something to them and just like, hey, do you realize that you do this and stop doing it? Thanks, guys. Okay, the first thing is she thinks that's how you have conversations. She's not mm. trying to one up you. No, I don't think. I, yeah, she I would thinks agree. that's how you're supposed to talk. Well, I, I, she's I, just wrong. But even though, even though, even if you're not right, which you 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 definitely could be, I think that you shouldn't. Uh, that you should err on the side of she's not doing it to try and fucking one up you. Well, she's definitely not. Like yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All no. Right, cool. Definitely not that. But cool. I honestly think that when people do something that people that makes people uncomfortable like mm -hmm. that. There, there. It's it. It is probably rooted in some kind of insecurity, but it actually is how they think a conversation is supposed to go. They think they're doing it right. Yeah, not maybe. that they're mm -hmm. insecure and, and sort of panicking, coming up with something right, right, just right. to say it. But Could I be. think it's still worth bringing up, and you can ask 
I don't think you should say stop doing that, but you can ask why she does it. You could do that or you could fucking do the exact opposite, which is make a crazier, make your stories crazier and crazier so she can't fucking match your stories. Tell her a fucking, yeah, well, dude, it was crazy. I robbed two banks one summer. What do you got to say to that, dude? And she won't be able to match you. And then she'll realize the error of her ways. Hey, I jumped out of a plane twice once with a parachute on and the other one i found a guy falling through the sky with a parachute on and i grabbed him and we both parachuted down what do you got to say to that she'll realize the error in her ways and then she'll probably stop doing it Mm -hmm. yeah or you could just ask her why she does it yeah either one is (laughs) equal um i just you know people like this are so annoying i like it's like you know a lot of comics do it But it's like, let the joke, I live in this world where I'll do it. And then people like, I like to let people's jokes kind of breathe. You know, they get the laugh. Like somebody says some shit. And before I tag it up and give it a fucking one, two, you know what I mean? Put that joke on the fucking speed bag. Do you know what I'm talking about? Before I start fucking dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, with the joke that's out there fucking drying in the air. Before I do that, I'll let it hang. Okay. And then I'll fucking put it on the speed bag and dang it, dang it, it up, right? And I respect if somebody lets me do that with my joke too. If I do a joke and then they fucking come in like Joe Coy and just, oh yeah, and also this, <laughs> and fucking don't let my joke be carefree and fancy out there for a little bit. It's annoying as shit, dude. Stop doing that, Joe mm-hmm. Coy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Okay. Sounds like you got a little bit of a deeper issue. It's thing just going he on. would always do it when we hang out and shit, and it's annoying. Okay. So, yeah, that's annoying and you are right to be annoyed by that. But I think uh, know that she's not trying to compete or when up you probably thinks that's how conversations actually go. Give her the benefit of the doubt. But feel free to ask her why she does it. Mm -hmm. However, try not to be like, stop doing that. I hate when you do that. Mm -hmm. Da, 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 anything Mm -hmm. like that. Uh, You're more likely to get the result you want (laughs) if you just ask her and sort of probe and she'll probably get the idea. Right. Okay. Cool. Next. Okay. Can't believe you. Hey, Chris, Matt, love the show. I need some quick advice. So I got a message from my ex's brother's wife. Um, They want to do an open relationship. Um, She says she's interested in me, but it's weird because I know her family. I know that they have kids. Uh, It's a new thing for them. And I don't really want to be the guinea pig. But, dude, she's so fucking hot. Okay. Um, I've thought about her before. He let that dude come out right there. You see a hot woman, you think about it. And... Dick says yes. Brain says no. Um, Who's Dick? So what do I do? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Hi, I'm Dick. Yes. Um, so I'm sorry. I need time to process that. Ex's brother's wife. Yeah. Ex's brother wants to bring this guy into the bedroom. So basically, his former brother-in-law, almost. Not even yeah, though they weren't yeah, married. Okay. Not really. His wife. His ex's brother, but not ex-wife. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, and they want to have an open relationship, and and the brothers assuming uh, he's okay with it too. They they yeah, agreed to have an open yeah, relationship. To, yeah, and they want to use this guy. I mean, fuck her. What do you what? do it? Yeah, what, I, I don't understand. I mean, at well, least I mean, once, the, it depends on how close he is with his ex. If it's if it's a fucking ex of three weeks, it's a horrible idea. Oh yeah. If it's an yeah. ex of five years, I, guess I assumed it was a long time. If you're ago, not yeah. in the person's life, then. Yeah, I, I think assumed it was a long time okay. ago. Yeah, you're right. I yeah, mean, it's yeah. definitely going to make her feel a certain type of way. If you don't give a shit and if it's been six years, then okay. I don't think it matters that much. But if you guys just broke up and you like literally like if, if she was like, if you were like, it's over. Hey, what's up, Chris and Matt? Like if you did it like that, right, yeah, yeah, then yeah, yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah. fucking you, you, doing this is definitely going to make your life more stressful than it is. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. So in that respect. It better be very boner inducing. Do you know what I mean? But let's assume, like most people, he doesn't even talk to his ex anymore. That, yeah. that, that's over with and it's done with and it's in the past. Yeah. It, this is some, like, think of it as you're some other hear from new her again, thing. No. Yeah, maybe. You're going to hear from her again. It's going to make yeah. your life more stressful. And so I'm, so I'm just saying that stress has to equal the inducement of the boner. Do you understand? She, yeah, I do. But she asked him, right? Yeah, she asked him. Yeah, it wasn't okay. his idea. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, even though he looks like he's from Lincoln Park, it wasn't his he idea. It does, yeah. And so what you do is you balance. You take the stress to the boner-inducing scale. You take it to the boner-inducing scale. That's what you do. Kinsey. And you say, Kinsey. <laughs> Dude, remember when Kinsey had the orgasm in the movie when Liam Neeson was playing him? And he was like, I can orgasm in like, 12, in, in like two seconds, you know? And he just goes, hut, hut, hut. And that a was quarterback! it. Yeah, a quarterback. A <laughs> quarterback. <laughs> Dude. 
Kinsey was a fucked up guy. I know, dude. I just watched a documentary and it fucking mentioned him. And apparently he would do crazy fucked up shit and he have like, crazy scales. Made like 11 month olds come. Hey, Kinsey, you're canceled. No, no, no. I know, but. <laughs> like, what the yeah. fuck? We're canceling John Wayne because he said something in Playboy know, magazine? <laughs> you made 11 year olds come. I know. 11 dude. month olds come. I know, dude. Crazy shit, dude. Canceling people because they fucking, you know what I mean? God, because they were on. Fuck, remember when they tried to cancel Roseanne Barr for doing the shit that you did? Because you yeah, tweeted well. something on Ambien? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And yeah, now. I almost got Roseanne, yeah. Yeah, you almost got fucking Roseanne, but the fucking. Wow, but she dude. said something actually racist, which is actually pretty fucked up. It is, I know, but she didn't know she did I know, it. But, I know, but it's harder to be like, I was on Ambien when you're like- I don't remember what just she being racist. I don't remember what she did. Me neither. I honestly. think it was a racist thing, though, right? Okay. I don't know. I have no uh, idea. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, Kinsey's, can Kinsey's canceled. You should just fuck that woman. Yeah. Uh, right you have to put it on the scale, on the boner inducement scale. Kinsey. <laughs> you have to fucking look at it and be like- the, str the stress level is so, so where you look and you get a six, the stress level is at six. Now, when we bring it over to the boner inductor. Boner inductor, you know. We, we look at. So the, not scientific. We look at the boner inducement of this. You know, we look at her hourglass figure and we look at her titties and they would come out further than her hips, but her hips at the bottom become big. So that is. Titties. That is, <laughs> <laughs> and the okay, boner now for the titties exam. We, ca we, we, we. We we equate her boner inducement to a 7.5. So you have 1.5 to play with. The stress is six and the boner induction. Wow. So what it is, you have a point, you have a point one point five plus on the boner inducement scale. So go have an open relationship. Deleted scenes from McKinsey. And cut. We got it. <laughs> All, right, All right, yeah. All right, yeah. What's up, Lifeline? That's a... Uh... It's Mr. Cuban Link from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Oh, damn. oh, wow. Jesus. Hope you guys are in your three-seater Ferrari with your dad. Yeah. Top down, titties sure. exposed. You know what oh, I'm saying? Okay. Oh, that's right. Uh, it's I got do. a little lifeline. Uh, we planted some pumpkins out in our backyard. Okay. That's uh, July. On the left side of the trees is my property. On the right side is my neighbor's. Planted our pumpkins on the left side of the trees. Then a couple weeks later, uh, neighbors mowed it over. Oh. oh. Pretty pissed about it. Uh, we'll be RM. Well, what do you Order guys think the repercussions are for that? Let me know. I know Thank what you. The, I know what the repercussions. Plant are. pumpkins Dots. on their side. Okay. Yeah, yeah baby. Please. Threat syndrome. Plant, yeah, dude, plant, for real. Plant pumpkins on their side. Direct confrontation. Eye contact. Direct confrontation. A knock on the door. Knock, knock, knock. Door opens. Direct eye contact. Why did you mow my pumpkins? Uh, did they mean to? You're gonna find out when you ask them. Did you mow over my pumpkins on purpose or not? And now be careful because you don't want Mr. Cuban Link coming out. <laughs> no, but I think you should say, why did you do it? Mm. And then let them say what if they don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, and if You'll they, know. You'll yeah. be able to read that. Oh, so you think that maybe they did it and they don't even know, dude. Pumpkins are very visible. That's what you brought. You asked, did they do it on purpose? I know, I know, know, I know. So what are you, you're fucking telling me I'm, I'm, I'm just going along with what you, you said. did you mow my pumpkins? I yeah. don't like when my pumpkins are smashed. I don't like smashing pumpkins. Wow. Despite all my rage, I'm still just around the cage. Yeah, dude. They don't know what you mean. Um, that was cool when you sang. It's cool when I sing, too. No, it's honestly just cool mostly when I sing. No. Uh, and dude, I, I want to be honest, and I hate saying it. The flood of comments about how good I am at because singing like since the last off. two episodes like to piss me off. are unreal i love you all i appreciate you all i know you love my singing chris hates it you can't He's do wrong. it like that you're all great dude you, you can't do it like that what does that mean you can't do you what? can't do it like this despite all my rage i'm still just around the cage you I can't do it like that. i don't want to do it like that well whatever bro okay anyway ask him dude confront direct eye contact why did you mow my pumpkins they're your neighbor just knock on their door Hi. Why did you mow my pumpkins? <laughs> yeah, dude. Exactly. John Malkovich. All yeah. right. Cool. Why did you mow my Matt, disgusting Chris, pumpkins? So dude, Nicole. This guy's a shit. Sunny Bloomfield, New Jersey. Oh yeah, shit. In my home studio. Nice. And, Close uh, to where we're from. Yes, I'm Dominic a musician. Guitars. Uh, question's got to do with that. What do you guys do when you get a uh, writer's block? I know y'all are both creative. Yeah. Wondering if you got any tips for us? Any little things you like to do to keep it fun? Um, let me know. I'd love to hear back. And uh, there are folks in this world that get it. And that don't, and I really feel like y'all two get it. So appreciate you. Keep doing what you're doing. I don't have a soundboard, so I'm just going to play myself out. See you later. Mm -hmm.
Oh shit! This guy's fucking killing oh, wow. it. Wow, this shit took him uh, all afternoon yeah, to do. You know what I mean? The, took him all afternoon shit. to do that video. That was dope. Though. Neglected fucking duties that he had as a fucking you know what I mean, friend and parent yeah, or whatever sure, the fuck he yeah. is. Um, was late picking up his wife at the airport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, where have you been? Sorry, dude. Look what I made. Yeah. She um, forgave him for sure. Yeah, but, she goes, who's that for? And they go, they, these guys, and go, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, I think that writers, my advice to write, people who ask about writer's block is always the same, which is that in my experience, of course I get writer's block. And when I do, when I panic or get mad at myself or try to like do some fucking thing to power through it, it actually makes it worse. You got to fucking cut the cord and let it go. And then you will circle back quicker mm. And quicker to good writing than you would have if you either like put pressure on yourself, made yourself do it, fucking got mad at yourself, whatever the fuck. You just got to fucking let it happen. It'll pass quicker if you do that. So if you just relax and succumb to the writer's block. Come to the writer's block. Succumb to the writer's <laughs> If you block. come to the writer's block. Yeah. Come to the uh, writer's block. So, all right. So then you, what you do is you, re, you, what if it lasts like a week? It won't. Got it. Wow. It he's won't. so confident with it his won't. shit, dude. It won't. Unless you're like... <laughs> Then, then it, it will, will last a week. You know? If you it. think you're fucking a bad writer because you why can't I? Da, 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 it's just like it happens. Your brain is just doing a thing that naturally happens. That was crazy when you went, oh, that was literally what I was doing when my friends were opting to burn themselves alive in my dream <laughs> last night. That was what I was doing for real. I woke up to it. And then I fucking fell asleep again. And then I woke up to Kristen moving her shit and it hit my chest and I go, oh, and I had a fucking heart and my shit was pounding for so long I couldn't get back to sleep. And then I did an hour later and then I woke up to her about 10 minutes later fucking looking at Instagram. Didn't get good sleep all because of her. And my friends were opting to fucking burn alive in my head. Woo! All good, dude. I mean, that might be more why you had a bad night's sleep than yeah. Kristen, you know? I think though... You know, bad dream will fuck up a night, dude. A whole day, a whole next day. I had a dream where I fucking tripped at a party and I shot a gun and a bullet hit dad. I didn't even know he was at the party. And dad died because I shot him. And I was like, just ruined the entire fucking next two days. Senator, <laughs> can we please get back to what <laughs> the issue here? Healthcare. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, let it fucking pass. It will. Is okay. my advice. Let it pass. Just let it wash over you. How yeah, about that? Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Hi guys, a uh, huge fan. It's cute. I'm yeah. a true baby for life, um, cool. but I'm going to say that this podcast actually might be my new favorite. Ooh, um, wow. My question today is how would you react to my situation? Um, Check this out. I have a stepmom that has stressed me out for 20 years. I have completely bit my tongue and not brought up any kind of issue with her for the sake of everyone around me, my sister, <laughs> my dad. Um, and it's just eating away at me. Um, she's just very passive aggressive. It's oh. not even that crazy. She, I just find her very stressful to be around. And as soon as I had my son, um, who's Calvin's age, uh, oh. and I'm pregnant with my second right now, oh. Um, oh, I just wow. found it even harder to deal with. Yeah, um, I'm sure. I kind of blew up on her a little bit for yeah. the first time ever uh, a couple weeks ago. Go. And I'm just deciding now, I think it's time to cut ties. Mm. Um, who is her? Stepmother. Obviously, but that said, means possibly losing my relationship with my dad. And oh. I've also um, experienced some guilt from my sister because it's going to make her life harder. Yeah. Um, wow. I think I know what the right call is. And I think I know what you guys will say. But I need your advice to help pump me up um, when I'm having moments of weakness with this decision because I've never put my foot down or, or established any boundaries. I'm also eight months pregnant and yeah. not in the right mindset to be doing this yeah, stuff totally, anyway. Yeah. So if you have any personal experience that you can give me for reference or any other advice, that would be great. Thanks. Bye. What a cutie. So I think right now do whatever you want because you're eight months pregnant. Yeah. Just fucking like don't right. – don't like you can even block her fucking number if you want or even your dad's too it's like you're eight months pregnant do what you got to do and don't worry about explaining it to anybody i think ultimately in the long in the long run because if you do want to keep a relationship with your dad i would say maybe you you want to just let her know look if we're going to stay in touch if we're going to have a relationship i need it to be like this and this is what i need from you and this is what i need you to stop doing and then if she can't do that then you walk away and cut the cord knowing you actually did try to actually just cut the cord without giving them the opportunity to meet the criteria that you have. You 
it's not that that's a bad idea. It's not that that's morally wrong. I think you might end up living with some kind of regret if you give this woman the chance to actually uh, be the kind of person that you want her to be in your life, at least. Uh, then I think that going forward, even if she can't do it, you will feel better about yourself and your own life. Okay, so I did the joke where, uh, where her face opened up and another face came out right. and was a demon and had a big tongue and goes, you know, yeah, we uh, and I missed. What is her stepmom doing? She's just passive aggressive and like yeah. making her. But she didn't get that specific, but yeah, okay. she's clearly being Struggling pretty fucking it. terrible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Button pushing, I think, is the vibe I got. You know? Dude, it's such a fucking fucked up. Like, you don't choose your family, you know? Like, you got to fucking be... I mean, you can, I guess, when you get to a certain age, you can choose to not be around them. But, like, it's so fucking annoying because, like, this doesn't just affect her and her stepmom. This also... This will affect her dad. This will affect her sister. Yes. This will affect everyone. So yeah, you have right, to yeah. kind of tread lightly, even though... I, what I think is... you Look, you blew up. It was eight months. You're eight months pregnant. You blew up. That's understandable, right? Because your hormones are going crazy. You've got you're, yeah. you're, you're two people right now. Do right? not feel bad about yeah, that. Yeah, so don't feel bad about it. I think that the number one thing is don't feel bad about how you're feeling and don't feel guilty about anything. You're a good person, obviously. Mm -hmm. You can tell that just by this. And like just just give yourself permission to not feel a certain way about how you're feeling. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. Like you feel the way you feel and that's fine. I think that's the number one thing. And number two, you just got to be direct and be like, look, you know, you're being passive aggressive or whatever the fuck you want to say. Mm -hmm. It's it's too much and it's, it's, it's affecting me and maybe it's something we can both talk through. I mean, dude, we have instances in our lives where we deal with passive aggressive people all the time and like, yeah. and, and, uh, and it's hard and it sucks. And, you know, I, I guess, I, I don't know. If you do figure it out, let me know too, because I need uh, to know. I, I, I think something you said is important though. Mm -hmm. Like don't put uh, any kind of like edge or judgment or glean on the way she's making you feel. She's making you feel that way. Don't be like, ah, I hate that she's making me mad. I hate that I'm yeah. getting upset at this. That's just a compounding of the problem. Like mm. she's doing it. That's the end of it. You have your brain. She has hers. They react in a certain way and there's nothing anybody can fucking do about it. It's about how to move on from that, whether that's with her in your life or not. Be aware of compounding the problem. The problem already exists. Don't add any more to it. It's already there for you. Mm. Uh, but yeah, don't fucking feel bad about anything. If you end up having to cut her out of your life, fuck her. It's her fault. Yeah. Cut her cord like you're going to cut that umbilical cord of okay. that baby when well, it comes out. You know? But I'm just saying, like, there can be two cords at the same time. Be it uh, symbolic. Like, I'm cutting this cord, and also in my mind, I'm cutting the cord for the stepmom. In fact, say it when the doctors cut the. Yeah. The umbilical Do you know cord. what this means? Like this with your. You know what? You know what that is too symbolic of to the doctor. Yeah, and the doctor's like, okay, stay still, please. No, because what happened is my <laughs> my stepmom is really annoying and she's passive aggressive. So when when we're cutting this cord, I'm imagining that it's the cord in the mind in, in my mind for the stepmom. Uh, cause she's very passive aggressive Sedator. and I don't want <laughs> doctor like this. <laughs> Sniff. Ma'am, leave please. All right. What's the baby's name? Cute. Hi guys. Naked. I am from Norway <laughs> and I work as a production dancer and the work lets Same. me travel all over the world and I have to speak English a lot. But I've not resided in one place for long enough to pick up either a British accent or an Australian or American. I was going to make that joke. So I've just kept my Norwegian one. Yeah. I have a broad vocabulary and I don't have a hard time making myself understood in most situations. So it works fine. But my problem is whenever I do a contract in a country that speaks English as their first language, and this is solemnly countries that has English as their first language, I get hassled a lot for my accent and it includes comments about how I pronounce different words or my tone and the way I speak or what is most common is I get asked probably four or five times a day where are you from mm. oh you have an accent and this includes like grocery store where I buy food and yeah. she would ask do you want to pay cash or card and I would say card please and she would say oh you have an accent where are you from usually I will politely tell yeah. them that I'm from Norway and most of the times they would have no idea where Norway is or what Norway is and I don't see it as my job to educate them and explain geography 
and I find it a waste of my time because it's happening so many yeah. times oh a day God. that I would love if you could help me find a concise response which I can reply and kind of shut down the conversation or is this a perfect time for a spin move or mm. should I sit down and learn an accent <laughs> and which one dude thank I, you life I, I was in I was in thank you for your uh, submission my I was in uh, high school and remember uh, <clears throat> Dojun? Oh, yeah. He, oh, yeah. He was, what was he? He was uh, Korean. He joined the army, remember? He was Korean? South Korean army. Yeah. Oh, my God. To fight against Kim Jong-un. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Jesus Christ. I mean, I him potentially. showing up at I his mean, doorstep like, oh, hi, uh, can I talk to you? you know, I mean, that I was, used to do that. Imagine him in the army, you know. Hey, is Chris home? Um, so, uh, yeah, just like this. Yeah. He was that, always yeah, like always, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is Kim Kim Jong Un is he? <laughs> Can the, I talk at to at the border? You know, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, no, he, uh, he and he would say to me, "I have been working on my uh, English accent. Do you want to hear?" Mm -hmm. And I would say, "Sure." And then I'll never forget this. And he leaned into my ear really mm -hmm. close, and he said, "He said." let's have lunch <laughs> and i'll never forget that dude do that learn just learn a fucking regular english accent or or it's so it's i feel bad for her it's really annoying if someone asks spin you, move is great it is a spin move Nor norway Choice. it's a good time for a spin move but interesting answer interesting answer because norway <laughs> I think you could just also just be like Chicago. You know what I mean? It's like right. never explain Say anything. Honestly, you'll get a laugh and you'll just be able to fucking probably get out of a lot of the situations or, or quicker if you just say Narnia. Right. Yeah, and then they'll yeah. be like, ha, ha, ha. Oh, wait, but, but I, and you're already spin. You're already gone. Yeah. You've already spun. Um, that's been my mentality. So uh, yeah. Or uh, just say, yeah, I just either do a joke. Mm -hmm. or just be like to be like i am hello paper or plastic yes i am from i am from exactly Ch jacksonville right yeah 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 let's it, have lunch atlanta <laughs> i am from atlanta let's have lunch <laughs> okay yeah that is so annoying though i'm sorry about yeah, american speaking sucks, countries sucks dude american speaking you know you know how we do it Hey guys, loving the new podcast. Nice. So basically my ex-husband and I were together for 10 years. We've been apart now for four. He's had a girlfriend that whole time. I've had a boyfriend for the last three. I'm actually pregnant due like any day now. So Whoa. super exciting. But we've both moved on and we're good. Like no beef at all. The issue is his sister is a real nasty little C word who made it very clear the entire relationship that she hated me Whoa. for no reason. Mm -hmm. And she is pissed because we never officially signed divorce papers. Initially, we weren't sure what we were doing for a while. And and then it just wasn't a big deal to us because we weren't fighting over anything. Right. So paperwork is started at this point, but she keeps going out of her way to harass me through what? different social medias. She keeps making new accounts to oh. just randomly unprovoked message me and calling me a ton of nasty names and what being awful to me. So people? I keep blocking her. I don't know what to do. My ex is so upset by this. Like he's the sweetest person. He just keeps telling her to leave me alone. What? She's almost 40. Like I shouldn't even be a thought in her life at this yeah, point. I don't yeah. get it. So... What do I do? Thanks, guys. Dude, people are so weird with that social media shit. I know. People, it's a Like, what did this sickness, person do dude. in the 90s? It's a sickness. Just <laughs> sat down and was pissed off. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I, this Roll is- Roll letters, you know? This is so weird, dude. It's like a weird, like, a, it's like an epidemic. It's like a, a social contagion or something, the way people act about this shit. Um, I, th I don't even know what you could do. I mean, you're doing the right thing. You're just blocking just and like block. ignoring. Yeah. Don't engage. Um, I mean, her ex should handle it though. Yeah, but like, I mean, if you were doing this to an ex of mine, I'd be like, Chris, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. And I would make you stop right. somehow. Yeah, that doesn't I mean, make any sense. But dude. if I'm mentally uh, this woman unstable, is, this I do it anyway. Mentally unstable, no question. That's the issue. Somebody right. needs to like get her help. That's unless so the, weird. Unless the ex is, which it doesn't sound like it, the ex is telling her one thing and also doing a different thing, like being like, yeah, no writer. You know what I mean? But they've been cool the whole time. I don't think yeah, that yeah, doesn't that's sound what I'm likely. Well, she's Maybe mentally, if it was tumultuous at some point, but it never was, she says. There should be some sort of like, uh, what do they call it? Uh, when you when you call um, the the authorities on somebody you to, to check on them and, 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 oh, and they take uh, them to a mental place. What do they call it? It's like they, you're 86ing someone or something. Yeah. Not 86. No, yeah. 
5150. Uh, that... They should be that kind of a thing with social media. Yeah. Like like you get to call somebody and then they get locked out of their all of their accounts. Right, yeah. And they got to go to like, or some shit, I don't know. Yeah. Or like they get visited. Like this is real Our life. Mental health But this is real life. Them, yeah. Like people think social media is just social media. Yeah. But it's real life, I dude. Know. This fucking woman is causing actual mental harm and stress yeah. to people. I've been on the other end of shit like that before. Not well, that fucking specifically, no shit, so but yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like- it's awful, dude. It is, yeah. It's really, really... It actually doesn't and, bother me, but it's bothered people around me yeah. so, so, so much. And I've seen the pain it causes people. It's really dark shit. Yeah, me. That woman needs extreme help. Yeah, it's me. Uh, it's not you, but it is you too, but that's it not what I was thinking about. Yeah, but um, I'm telling you, it's me. Woman needs help. But it's also she's pregnant, dude. That's crazy. Like she's about to pop a baby out? Something's wrong with this woman. She's scary. She's scary to me. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm upset, man. I'm scared. I, I think that honestly, it's the guy. You got to have a clear conversation. I know the guy's upset, your ex, but you got to have a clear conversation with him and be like, yo, you, you got to talk to, you got to, something has to be done. I'm eight months pregnant, whatever the fuck it is. Like this woman is stressing me out. I can't be a new mom and be dealing with blocking these fucking Finsta accounts. Yeah. You know? Please like, help. Please help. Please if help, you haven't yeah. had that conversation, have that conversation. Yes, exactly. And then uh, also- uh congratulations on your baby yeah i'll be in much. dallas uh i'll be in wichita i'll be in atlanta and i'll be in washington dc uh and savannah georgia go hit up chrislea.com for tickets and uh we got a bunch of new merch that just came out and we're working on lifeline merch we got that coming out soon. coming soon uh if you got a question for us click the link in the description below or go to watch dot calm uh pretty soon i got something special for you guys too uh coming up uh, i think you're gonna like it's this uh, oh. offer. <laughs> and uh do you remember pearl jam do you remember pearl jam yeah you don't though in the middle of when you were fucking singing it uh yeah don't call me daughter dude that is un if i saw that that would be so no bit fucked up for me. The picture cat will remind me. You know what I would do if you were doing that and I was really worried about it and we were in a plane, I'd do it with you. I would start singing with you Thank and you. I would be like, sorry, that's just what we do. Right. We're right, doing right. it as a as covering a, for me as, as a, a fun fun thing. Yeah. Like a bad eighties movie. Oh uh, yeah. So anyway. Right, right, we'll right. Both right. Do it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Yep. And then we'd walk off the plane and and the music would play over the track and a, don't call me daughter in slow motion. <laughs> yeah. Anyway.